Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Eversham. And uh, yeah, it's uh, a little bit coloured and a little bit up, but the river is dropping. But look where I'm stood. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> this is uh, this is Peg Warner Evesham on the Crown Meadow, and uh, it's underwater. But it is finding down; it is dropping. I've checked the levels; it's not going to come up today, um, so I can just about get away with putting my box on the platform rather than a step back. But you can see, actually, look, that's how high it was. You can see all this sloppy mud. So it's been up to about here, I reckon. Um, but it's on its way back down. But yeah, so this is where Peg Warner is. I'm sure if I rub that I'd see a peg one eventually when the colour all drops out but yeah it's a little bit up and coloured and flooded so let's fish the feeder on the pole <laughs> I mixed this before I left and uh, just got to riddle it now because it's a little bit lumpy because um, it's a traditional sticky mix so uh, we'll wrap that for a, a coarse ground bait riddle Take a few lumps off. So yeah, we just I just want it um I'm not bothered about getting rid of the lumps, I just want it to break down more evenly and not be too stodgy in the feeder. So uh I'm not bothered about big bits or anything. It's all gonna get washed down in the flow anyway. So uh but this is um sweet skimmer. Half the mix is sweet skimmer, and then I've got a bit of um Cernobates deep water and soil. That's it. So it's um Quite a, sh a really sweet, um, strong, um, really sort of, um, really smelly mix to be honest. But not fish meal. I haven't gone down a fish meal route. Um, I'm going down a natural. So, uh, so that's it. Just through a coarse riddle. That's not a maggot mesh riddle. It's a, it's about a quarter inch riddle. It's quite a, a coarse mix anyway. So, uh, um, so there we are. Yeah. So it, the colour doesn't matter too much. But that's it. We're all ready now. Pop that back in the bowl and just get a bit out as and when we need it. It's supposed to be dry today, but you know what my films are like. It's probably going to rain. But yeah, so we'll have a quick walk down and see where all my bits are. So I've got my box in. I've set it up high so I can tell if um, my foot plate's just above the water. If it starts coming above my foot plate, then I'll know the river's rising, but it should be dropping. So um, I think that's already dropped a few mil already. So uh, yeah. That's my set up. Somewhere under there is the platform. And the sun's out. The sun's going to be in my eyes. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully we'll catch a bream or two. Alright then, let's start. I'm going to cup in just three balls to begin with. And then I'm going to fish it over the top. Um, I've had a bit of a disaster because I wanted to fish at 11 and a half metres. And uh, there's a massive snag there. So I'm coming back to 10 metres. But it's not a problem because it's coloured. It was just a, a slightly nicer depth. So uh, anyway, we've got a bit of chopworm, not loads, I'm not putting loads in there to begin with. A few dead maggots, a few casters. Mix them all up, a bit of line there, pop that down there. And uh, the other thing I'm going to pop in, because it is obviously tanking through, is a bit of fine aquarium gravel, just two or three mil gravel. Don't be shy on the gravel, because I want it to go straight down. It's easier to control it when it's in the pole feeder, but just cupping in those three initial balls, I mean, some people would boil it today and put like 10 babies heads in and stuff, but I'm not sure we need to do that. I, I, I'm, we're only after a few fish. I don't want bait all over the place, but I want it where I want it. So uh, three hard balls. I'm going to flatten them a little bit as well. I don't want them rolling out the peg. I want to go down. They're not the biggest balls because... Uh, we're cupping them in and uh, a lot of gravel and soil and everything in there. So they're heavy balls. Probably got enough for a fourth. Just enough for a fourth. Let's pop four in. It's only a small amount of feed. Clock's ticking now. What's the time? It's 10 to, 10 to 12 now. And I haven't started so... Uh, I've had a, one of those days, shall we say. Lots of things thwarting me, trying to stop me from filming. <laughs> so, uh, right, 
Let's pop those in. All right, so it's 10 meters this. I was going to fish 11, but uh, massive, massive snag. So uh, we'll come a, a section shorter. Um, we just want to be dead accurate. So I'm popping it in my uh, pole seat each time. I'm going to cut them a little bit upstream. So by the time they go down, they're going to be in the in the catching zone, hopefully. Another one there. Pop that there. I don't mind if we're in a line. And then we'll just rely on the pole feeder after that, I think. We do have one quite a bit upstream. Care if we're all in a line as long as they're where my pole is. Last one. Dodge the swans. Definitely rolling. They're a nuisance already, them swans. There we are. Wash straight down. And all we've got to do now is pop a hook length on and we're good to go. Let's get cracking. Alright, pop a bit more of this ground bait in there. A few casters, a few dead maggots, pinch of worm, and uh, we'll go through the rig in detail. But I'm itching to actually get fishing, so uh, we'll let's catch a fish first. Try and find a biggish worm. I'm just going to nip the very, very end off. There we go, and uh, pop a dead red maggot on as well, just a bit more just to help that worm stay on and uh, just going to fill it like you would a normal feeder really no gravel in this bit right and uh, you could use bungees and things but I've got the side puller here which is perfect for wrapping it around ship it out above the water to wrap it around that way we can ship out above the above the water stand up if you need to there we are I'm popping it in the old pole seat twisting it round right and you want to just stop it pendulum a little bit swing it upstream and then lower it and it should if you get it dead right it should just land bomb there that's where we are and now we're fishing there's going to be a few leaves coming down hitting it but hopefully, hopefully we're in shot. Yeah, we're in shot. Let's see how quickly it takes to get a bite. We could look at anything on this. We might get taps off roach and, and uh, perch and things, but it, I'm fishing for quality fish. So uh, if we can catch like, you know, a couple of big fish for the cameras, happy days, job done. So, uh, so it's probably about 12 o'clock now. We've got a fish till three. The sun's really bad. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. But yeah, so we're watching. We're watching the elastic. We're watching the uh, that connector. Um, I've tried all sorts of uh, gadgets and gizmos. This is something I've cobbled together on the bank. Yeah, I've done all sorts with a pole feeder, and I've had a quite a bit of success with it. Really, I, I was um, I framed. I don't know if I was second or third, second, third or fourth in the, uh, actually here, about five or six pegs further down on uh, on the Evesham Festival fishing the pole feeder. Had a nice big bream and a couple of chub. And uh, yeah, the, if we do catch a bream today, it could be as big as six pound. So, uh, so I don't mind just giving it a lift and that helps that feeder just empty a little bit. And then we'll just straighten it all back up, bring it upstream, and then lower it down again on the spot. And we want to be down or at a slight angle. I don't want it too far down. All right, we need to reposition that. Once it's empty, it's, it's obviously loses a bit of its weight. So that's the 30 gram feeder. Bosh, that's it, we're better now. And it's all a matter of trial and error this it's 
it's a really accurate method but it's also a crude method and I, mean, I don't think anyone's got it absolutely nailed because you only get a couple of a couple of goes at it every year really so everyone I know has come up with a slightly different way of fishing it and slightly different theories and that I like bottom weighted feeders that can go straight down uh, it crossed my mind on the way here that I could have used um, a window feeder if I wanted to get a few more particles in the peg and less ground bait but generally plenty of ground bait is, uh, is a good thing on a, on a coloured river plenty of scent obviously it's going to wash downstream and draw some fish up but we want to just get a nice strong rattle on that on that pole tip now so uh, the very first time I saw this method it was with um, an elasticated um, quiver tip or flick tip on the end and it was Nick Larkin um, they, they fish on the old lorry they fish uh, the pole feed a lot on the air and, and rivers like that and they've got it down to a bit of an art and I know you can buy connectors and uh, pole feeder connectors and setups and that from uh, Nisa feeders uh, but this is something I've cobbled together myself and we'll see if we can catch on it but yeah he was using a, a quiver tip with uh, rings and elastic and all sorts of things it's progressed since then we have this sort of an external elastic system so you can see a bite and that will just bottom out but you'll see a bite you'll get a rattle on there you'll see that connect that orange connector I keep calling it a connector it's just a little sight bob I used to use pole float bristles and matchsticks and all sorts of things I've tried everything over the years I really enjoy this way of fishing if it works but hopefully you know we've got every chance of catching a quality fish or two on this they're in the area but because you're in sort of flood now there could be anywhere these fish they, they live around like peg one and two on here and they, and they live upstream but in this flood water they might just disappear into other pegs they just turn up in in different pegs these big fish but we could catch a barbel we could catch a bream we could catch anything on this uh, it'll be fun if we hook a barbel let's just say that but yeah I've got a strong gear really strong I've got a 12 hook 020 hook length a 12 to 14 slick elastic and the feeder rig itself is 023 so it's no messing let's start on a strong side because I don't think they've got a lot of time to inspect anything with this but yeah we'll start off on a bit of worm I'm just going to give it like three or four minutes and then keep plopping it in you know keep keep creating that uh that trail of feed so i think that's plenty of time there bring it back in and rebait check the hook bait it's all good not wrong with that a few dead maggots pinch of casters tiny pinch of worm chop some more up in a sec Again, just gonna wrap it around that. You could use a. Some people use cable ties, or um, a bit of an elastic's better than a cable tie. Put my key net. As you do. Oh come on, John. <laughs> and I am having one of those days. I've actually hooked the label of my key net, not the key net. <laughs> Again, a little hole in the label now, not in the net. There we are. Wrapped it around. Just about get it out without standing up. Hold it a bit more of an angle. I'm twisting it as I go so it's all released. Popping it in the, in the chair. Watch the leaf. Upstream. Down, 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 boom, we're fishing. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave it as it is for now, for a bit. I don't think it all leaves that feeder until you lift the pole. But I don't mind that because fish are going to come to the feeder and obviously the trail below it is going to be, a, some of the feed is going to come out of the holes in the feeder. But I think 
the plug of it goes when you finally lift it up. So uh, either when we get a bite and strike, or um, or if I just lift and drop it now. But I'm just leaving it in the feeder at the moment, and just so I've got a caged amount of bait, just, just a tiny bits coming down. So they're going to be attracted to that that cage of bait. I don't think it's washed out or anything yet. I think there's still quite a bit in there. Until I just lift it a few inches off the bottom, that's not going to empty. If you wanted it to empty, that's where I think something like a window feeder might be better. Some people use traditional side weighted feeders for this, but I think bottom weighted feeders were the way to go. You know, it's coloured water. These fish are obviously taking sanctuary and that. They could be anywhere. So it might take a little while for them to find it, but when they do, Hopefully it'll be uh, something decent on the end. So that's the only thing we're going to get is an odd leaf. So I've just twitched it now. That's it, we've emptied that feeder now. I don't mind if it's at a bit of an angle like that. That's not a problem. Or straight down. It's. I don't want it, if it's too severe, then your feeder's not heavy enough. But obviously we're straight down, so it's not like um, fishing it on a rod where you'd have to use a considerably heavier feeder because of the angles of the line in the water and everything but we're just straight down so we can get away with a, a 30 gram and it's only it's only six 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 foot seven foot there so it's not that deep it kind of works better in really deep pegs but uh, I don't know I just fancy coming up here just because I know there are bream in the area and chub <laughs> and big fish let's see if anything will uh, oblige so if we don't we'll give it an hour on this if we don't get a bite we'll, we'll scale down a little bit maybe but I want to be seeing bites and that bit of elastic is just a shock absorber it helps you so they're not hitting the pole tip and rejecting it it just helps subdue the bite and helps it's almost well like a quiver tip really it works in the same same way now I've messed around with different elastic I've got a number three on that um, it's surprising if you if you play around with it because it's only a short length it takes a lot of effort to pull it like you know what have we got four or five inches of number three elastic so um, you could go down to a number two but in my experience um, if my memory serves me correct when I've tried four and five elastics, it's been too fierce. You want it nice and soft. And it'll bottom out once that loop's straightened. You're playing it, you're not, never playing it on the elastic, you're playing it on the main line, and it's nice, strong main line. So, no bites. Let's just go a bit further down. Whoosh. Let's see. Probably not in shot there. But no bites come back and repeat the process just repeat the process nothing wrong with that worm or anything I'm gonna stick stick with the worm for now but uh, yeah it's dropped it's dropped half an inch already this so that's a good sign our dropping river is a good thing let's go out one more plop, then we'll change up bait. Try two or three maggots, something like that. A couple of bits of worm. Just waiting for it to stop pendulum in. Bosh, straight down. Let it catch up. Bosh, there we are. leaves are attracted to it like magnets obviously we could have fished a flat float there or a traditional feeder but there's definitely something about a, a pole feeder that really works and a, a lot of people I know a lot of my friends and that all the river aces that I rub shoulders with they they all seem to think you know when you get to about sort of eight to ten gram flat floats just swap to a pole feeder unless it's like an international rules match but this should this is more accurate and uh, cuts out a lot of the nonsense rather than using a massive 
uh, flat float. But there's nothing to stop you having a, a pole feeder, a flat float, and a running through rig as well. There's nothing to stop you having them all set up. But today, this is all about the pole feeder. Come on, let's get a bite. Yeah, loads of these yellow leaves coming down, hitting the line. But it'd been even worse if we were fishing a, a rod and line. All gathering on the line and giving you false bites. So come on then, fishes. All right, whilst we're waiting for that, I'm gonna chop a few more wurrumies up. Beauty of this, it is. It's nice, you can just chop a few more. Keep an eye on it while it's fishing. A bit more worm. But you can't get more accurate than this. You know all your baits all in the same spot. And if a fish is hungry, it's got to come to that spot. Cannot get more accurate than a pole feeder. It can be a bit of a sit and wait job. But it's nice when it works. It's really sunny, but it's got a bit of a nip in the air as well. We've had no end of rain. Tomorrow, tomorrow's gonna book it down, so the river will be back up again. But yeah, we've had a bit of water lately. So no bites, let's just give it a Which, so that's all empty now. I'm confident that's emptied. But that sort of angle, I quite like that. I don't want it any uh, more acute than that. But that sort of angle is is, is fine. But I say, if I can catch two, just two quality fish, <laughs> one just to prove it works, and two to show it weren't a fluke. <laughs> any more than that's a bonus. And obviously the other things we can do is lengthen our hook length or shorten it. Probably more inclined to lengthen it than anything. And I do know sometimes you can add a couple of shot on your hook length if you think it's coming off the bottom a bit too much. So that's another option as well. But I've gone with about a 60 centimetre hook length to begin with. But yeah, every, we've got every, we could definitely lengthen it. All right. Back again. Change your bait to something else. All right, we've got two worms on now, two smaller worms. Then just drop it upstream. Down, 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 down. Bosh. And it's like any feeder fishing, you've got to decide when to strike as well. But it's good for bream, uh, chub, eels. It's a nice ugly fish method. So, uh, but you will catch roach, you will catch uh, hybrids and things on it as well and smaller skimmers. But at the moment I'm geared up and my thoughts are to fish for big fish. So, you know, just two or three bites in a five hour match could be enough to win. I'd rather be doing this than fishing for bleak. <laughs> but uh, each to their own. But we're in November now, so, uh, you know, November floods, cold water going in. Is that a fish or a dog? Something big just rolled four meters out, 10 meters upstream, and it hasn't come back up. I reckon that was a, I reckon that was a fish. Might be fishing too far out. Oh, that's a bite, that's a bite. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, we got one. We got one. What we got? Feels decent. Might be an eel. No, what we got? Hybrid. It's a great big roach. 
No! That was a great big roach. <laughs> no! That was 12 ounce plus roach. No! Oh dear. Oh well. Too, <laughs> oh. Too busy looking up there. Oh well. That's on two bits of worm, two small worms. Let's try that again. That was a huge roach. Definitely a roach. Oh. But that's anyway, that's a good sign. Bites, that's what we want. If it was a match, I'd be gutted right now. Good bite that, wasn't it? That was a really big roach. I'm going to say it was 12 ounce. But we'll never know for sure. Unless we catch its brother. Or mama. Right, oh good. That was lovely though, wasn't it? Seeing that bite. But yeah, the biggest mistake I made when I first... Oh, that was a bite straight away. I'm sure that was a tap. The biggest mistake I made when I first did this was that bit of elastic, because it's only like four or five inches long, is, was to make it too heavy. You'd think like you want like a five or a six or something. But I think a three is perfect. You could go down to a two. The lighter it is, the better. All it is is a bite indicator. So it'd be like using a one ounce or a half ounce cover tip. I think we were really unlucky there. But it's all a balancing act because obviously it's crude gear, heavy elastic, geared up for, you know, four and five pound bream. If you was just catching pound fish and smaller, then you could lighten everything down and put like, you know, 10, number 10, eight or a 10 elastic in. But I've got a 12 to 14 in there because we could hook anything. But like I say, I don't do this loads. I'm no expert. I enjoy doing it and I have had success with it. But none of us are experts because none of us fish it for very long. You get a little window every year when the rivers are in flood. More often than not these days, they just call the matches off. So, uh, or, or move to a a canal or a, or a still water these days. It's only the hardcore that carry on fishing when it's up and coloured. But so anyway, we've had one bite, one fish and it's come up. Ah, never mind. Beautiful bite though. And for a roach to hang on, that's good. They're the fish that are gonna potentially reject it. Maybe I needed a slightly longer up length. Maybe I struck too soon. Oh, I was just unlucky. Oh, that was, oh, I think that was the wind. Actually, now the wind has got up. I'm kind of glad I have stuck to 10 metres. Bow feeder. He's a man who's just lost a great big rope. Let's try three maggots, three dead maggots. Boom. Yeah, the elastic, as I say, it's number three. It's the original Matrix stuff. I've got a packet of it here. It's nice and bright yellow. The I think, yeah, so you want something bright that you can see, really. There's nothing too dull. And then it's a Stompho Sight Bob. Stompho Sight Bob. One, these go on top of a pole float to thicken the bristle up. But they're useful for, for other applications like this. And a swivel at each end. A snap link swivel at each end. There's all sorts of contraptions and that you could try. Boat coming. Uh, we'll go 
have a quick go on these three uh, dead maggots. And then we'll, uh, I reckon we'll pop two big worms on again. Obviously on a raging river, there's nothing wrong with doing it, it's just five or six metres out. I've done it at this distance purely because it's quite shallow, this, this, this peg. It's just a nice sort of range, sort of, you know, 10, 11 metres is a nice range for a pole feeder. But yeah, I'd happily do it, you know, five, six metres out if, if the peg dictated it. And I've got smaller feeders than that, but that's that's one of the new um, matrix bottom weighted, plastic bottom weighted feeders. That's the medium, I've got the large on at the moment, 30 gram. But uh, I imagine the bait's just getting washed away all the time anyway, so uh, it's not a, you know, don't be shy on the bait. A cormorant, a big cormorant just went by. Middle of the day in Evesham. Not a good sign, is it? Got a couple of big smelly worms back on. And uh, next, if we don't get a bite on this, we'll, we'll lengthen the tail. That roach was on two smaller worms, so we'll try two big ones to start with. Then we'll go back to two smaller ones. And like any pole fishing, the more accurate they can be, the more you'll catch. So when it comes to quality fish, we're keeping everything down one hole. When we do get an arrival, we'll make the most of it. Yeah, because we're not getting any dips or taps or plucks, I'm going to put a, a longer hook length on next time. And I might just put, do you know what, I'm going to go fine. I'm going to put a, a 14 to 018. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm bottling it already, ain't I? <laughs> I'm actually on the Avon at Stratford this weekend on the, on the Stratford Classic on Sunday. And uh, if it stays like this, this could definitely be a viable method. So we're on the wreck, the Lido, Lucy's Mill. Uh, not sure if we're at Seven Meadows and those areas as well. But uh, yeah, it should be good. You're going to want bream, I think, if it stays like this. There should be some big bags of roach and stuff as well, I imagine hybrids silver bream could fish its brains out with it fining down but yeah we've had that one bite and that's it so I'm gonna scale down next to it these are a meter long I'm gonna make it about 90 centimeters New hook length ready. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hey, oh, oh we snagged. And we're free again. Phew. <laughs> that one looks okay. Let's pop. Final one on. Just see if it makes a difference. If not, we'll go back to a, a bigger up. Uh, I'm going to stick with worm. Fish. I'll 
So I'm eating my apple. What have we got? Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a smaller roach. So whatever we lost was considerably bigger than that. <laughs> oh dear me. Look at that cronking big roach. The one we lost, I reckon was almost twice the size of that. <laughs> he were on for a while, that one. I didn't know whether to let it develop or not. There we are, on the old pole feeder. Nice. That was on a whole worm, wasn't it? Brilliant. And I actually cut out the particles. So, uh, let's try that again. Lovely. So we've had a roach and lost lost an even bigger roach. I'll just eat my apple then as well. Guaranteed to bite, isn't it, when you stop to eat some it. Don't mind catching roach on it. If you can catch roach on it, then you you know your your gear's all right because obviously they're a bit more discerning than the uh, than the bigger mouth fish. Yeah, so I'm going to cut out the particles just for a little bit and just see. But we've had a roach straight away. The only thing they've had is the ground bait and the worm. There's no casters or maggots or anything in there. That's good. The whole point of that bit of elastic is to stop them hitting that pole tip and rejecting it. You'll get some that will just pull the elastic out, fishing it like that, I'm sure, but at least you see the bite and you can, it softens the bite and lets you know when to strike a bit more. Good. Half a dozen of those, I'll be happy. Definitely wasn't as big, that, that, that one I lost was a lot bigger than that one that I just got. Say if it was predominantly roach, I'd drop it down to 10 to 12 slick. But I know what'll happen then, I'll look a great big bream or a barbel. So uh, it's a fine juggling act really. But we've got a big hook on. You know, strong size 14 on now. We started on a 12. A stab one big old stab that definite bite that one it I'm gonna say we've got a few roach in the peg Tell you what, that ain't no roach. That ain't no roach. That ain't no roach. Stay on. That ain't no roach. A big old bream. He's downstream now, so we need to get him up. Snag me. He's out. He's out. No, he's still snag me. There he is. How are we going to get him up? I'll try and get him upstream now. Just 
better than done. Snag me for a bit. Go away, swan. What is it? Go away, swans. I've got 12 to 14 on now. I'm going to say he's fouled up. Try not to pull too hard now. He's just hanging in the flag. Foul bream, I think. Got him. <laughs> foul up bream. I'm sure he's foul up. Let's have a look and see where he is. Was he just wrapped round him? No, he's in the mouth. He's just wrapped all the way wrapped round him. Oh, go on. Oh, he's wrapped round both his fins. Wow. <laughs> wow. Brilliant. That was a. Let's hook this up and have a look at him. <laughs> that was a bit hairy, wasn't it? What are you going to say? He's three pound. There we are, on the pole feeder. <laughs> Brilliant. What a strange bite, he snagged me up downstream. Definitely did. I'm not, I'm not gonna eat that apple now, it's a bit mucky. Move that there for the swans. There we are, so. A little longer tail, definitely. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, but yeah, brilliant. <laughs> so, well, there's one bream, there's more. Let's pop. That's a smallish worm, so let's pop a second one on. Let's pop two worms on. Brilliant. And that was cutting, cutting out the, uh, the particles. Both times we've done that, we've caught a fish. Wow, you can see why you want that strong elastic, can't you? Let's tie the slime on that hook link. Two little blobs. Alright, so let's get back out there. Wow, good. I thought I was going to have one of them days losing that roach first, Jock, and uh, finding the snag before I start as well. But we've had a nice roach. We've lost an even bigger roach and we've had a three pound bream. That was unbelievable, that fight. He was right down there, but he definitely snagged me up. And then he got wrapped round him. I think that's why he was so hard to bring back upstream. Lovely though. Pole fishing, feeder fishing, best of both worlds. Such an unusual way of catching fish, but it's nice when it works. So I've already achieved my goal. I've had two, two decent fish, but uh, I'm greedy, let's see if we can catch another couple now. So it took, you know, 30, 40 minutes to get our first bite, which we lost. <laughs> but then we've had a nice roach and a nice bream. So we'll see what happens with this cast and then we'll put some particles in next 
next chuck again. Now there's some fish clearly about. Got a little dollop there already. Oh, there we are. Right. Not sure what this is. Going downstream again. Oh, oh. I thought it was a probably unshipped too soon, haven't I? Because <laughs> definitely unshipped too soon. He'll come. It's a bit bigger than I thought. But you know, it's all gone right downstream. I don't want to pull them too hard because I don't want to rip the hook out. It's a good fish. What is he? Is that a roach? It's a skimmer, I think. Oh, it's a. Number one. <laughs> well, I thought it was about 12 ounce when I first hooked it, but no, same size as the last one. <laughs> Brilliant. Happy days. There we are, another preen. <laughs> that's on two worms that was just a proper bite that just add it and then and on I can catch three that's job done three of them bream they're the target fish them's are what we wanted well we've had four bites we've hooked them all but one's come off so uh, not bad uh, not bad ratio not bad odds if I can catch a third bream, that's it. That's that's job done. It's one of those methods. I think you've got to be positive as well and almost fish it for for five hours or fish this one line for five hours. There's nothing to stop you trying a, a rig over the top or a flat float or something. But I think you've got to pick that line and fish it for at least four of your five hours. You can always try down here or something as well. But, you know, you need to... You might just get a short window. You need to be fishing it, constantly feeding it. It's a plan A game, you know, it's a plan A method really. Ooh. What's going up now? It's cold. Come on in. Next cast, I'm definitely just going to go in with just the uh, just ground bait. I've not mixed up loads anyway, because I wasn't planning on balling it or anything. Cup a few balls in and then fish this over the top. Yeah, you know, I think if you was just after one bite, if it's one of those sort of days where it's like fishing rubbish and you're after one bite, I probably wouldn't put anything in. Just just go in with the ground bait and your hook bait. You can always you can always add a few particles later. And uh, that connector's just a you know two or three inches above the surface. The, it's definitely dropped now because it's probably an inch higher than it was. But I've got no problem shortening that. I made that up on the bank when I got here. That's just O23 line, twizzle boom, and arc length, and a free running feeder stopped by a, a cube shot. Very very simple. It's just that top ten inch. That's the important bit. And this is vital. You must have a pole, a pole rest, a pole support, a gentleman's rest, call it what you wish. But you must have that. That's nice when the sun comes out and breaks through those clouds. That was bitter for a little bit. So let's just empty that. And there's nothing to stop me, you know, feeding another two or three big balls and then going back in again with this. Can, if, if we think there's too much feed, I'll drop I'll drop the feed aside and try a little one. I'm not convinced we need to though. I had brought this 
like a feeding feeder. Oh, there we are. Is that me? What was that? I wasn't looking. I think some of it either some underwater has brushed into the line or a bit of rubbish came down or that was a bite. What do you reckon? Maybe the feeder slipped. No, we've got a fish on. <laughs> that was just on. <laughs> oh, it's come off. I don't know what that was. Small fish, I think. Hmm. Not sure what happened there. I wasn't looking really, was I? It's a small fish anyway. See, I've got, I have got a bit of extra pole elastic dangling out the base of my top kit. I don't mind having extra elastic in my pole, hanging out the bottom. It's a little tension nice, but it just means I've got a bit more elastic should I hook some at massive. So yeah, that was a, a small fish on, I don't know what it was. I didn't really see the bite, I was looking away. I wasn't sure if the feeder had slipped or what. Never mind. Yeah, we seem to get more bites when we're just feeding ground bait and our hook bait and no particles. It's interesting. Next cast, regardless of what happens, we'll, we'll, I'm, well, I'm keen to try a couple of live maggots. Let's we'll see what, what, what response we get on that. Got some fluoro pinkies as well. I've just mixed up some live maggots and pinkies there. Just for the hook. Wait, wait, this one just pecked my welly. <laughs> welly, I said. Definitely said welly. Right. So we've pretty much been fishing worms, haven't we? So let's try a uh, Let's try something else. I'm going to try a couple of nice big maggots. And a fluoro pinky. Yeah. Something about fluoro pinkies that I like to feed. They just catch fish everywhere, don't they, on these rivers? see what we catch on this. My guess is it'll be a roach but you don't know. Feels like the river's dropped but actually the pace has increased. That's how it feels. It's definitely dropped. Johnny. Yeah, he's coming. No, I want to get him up here and then, and then let him go back down. No, he's going in the flow again. You see that though? I lifted and dropped, didn't I? And it, and it had it straight away. Maybe it was sat there with it in its mouth. We'll never know. Feels like a good fish, yes. 
to take another section off or not. Probably the wrong thing to do. Fish. Oh, it's a bigger one. Oh, he is a bigger one. Oh, he's a good one. He's a good one. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, he's at least four, I'm going to say. Oh, no, he's five pound now. All day long. <laughs> Oh, well, that's that concludes my film. I think you've seen enough. Oh, there! I forgot what I was had on. I forgot what I had on. That was on a two maggots and a pinky, wasn't it? Biggest fish on the smallest hook bait. Put the disgorger there. Let's hook this up. And. Uh, That's a cracking fish to conclude this film, I think. That is definitely, well, it's four and a half if he ain't five. I'm not gonna be able to pick him up. We'll just try and hold him a bit closer to the camera. See, he's got some fight in him. There we are, great big pretty. <laughs> Let's pop him back in there. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. In November, pole feeder, flooded water. <laughs> Get out there and try it. Okay, let's have a look at the rig. At the moment, I've got a 14 hook on, MXB2. You could put a 12 on for sure. Uh, a 18 hook length, and obviously that will vary. It's loop to loop. They've got a little bit of a twizzle boom here. From there to there. And then I've got uh, a number eight, a number eight um, cube shot, and then a snap link swivel and my feeder on the end. Uh, a large 30 gram plastic bottom weighted is what I've used today. You could go a bit bigger than that, but that's been all right today. And that's just free running. That's on 023 line. And then um, elastic, as I've showed already, is 12 to 14 slick. I've got a load hanging out at the end, that's deliberate. It just means I've got extra elastic in my pole if I hook anything really, really big. Um, and that bead's important, obviously. One, it stops the elastic, uh, it tensions the elastic how I want it, but also it allows me to drape my feeder over that when I'm shipping out. So, uh, and then, so this is the all important end. So basically, I've got a uh, a very short length of 023 line with a loop in the end to go to my Dacron and at this end I've just put a Palomar knot and a snap link swivel and onto this I've attached a short length of elastic and a loop. Now that bit of elastic there I'm going to say it's five inches long and then the loop of line is 12 inches long shall we say. There's a loop on the end of the elastic there, there's a loop on the end of the, the line there. So you've got this big loop, this D, it creates this big D. And um, when you get a bite, it'll strain it out, the elastic will bottom out, and then you're playing it on this 023 line. Okay? And then at the end, I've just got a little sight bob. These, this is a Stompho um, pole float thickener, I think. I think that, that's what you call it. And I've just wedged that over another snap link swivel. And then my rig or my length of line attaches to to that to that little snap link swivel. So there we are. So that's my pole feeder indicator. A little bit of a complicated affair, I suppose, but it works, as you've seen. And the rig just snaps onto there. I can put this in a little packet and can keep this stored away in a packet. Get two or three of them made up, 
and uh, that's it that's all you need but that's important you could use this doesn't have to be a snap link swivel and this um, pole this thick bit of pole float bristle it could be a, a high vis plastic connector you know a pole connector but I think that's neat and it covers up this snap link swivel and it lets me loop to loop I can vary this I could take this off and pull a lighter or a heavier one on I could put a, a longer or a shorter loop of line on here so it's versatile that's the main thing for me so yeah loop there loop there and a snap link swivel at each end very very simple really but a bit fiddly to make <laughs> but it works and it's a uh, good fun well there we are three cracking bream all on the pole feeder next time your river's up and coloured why don't you give it a go well thanks for watching it all the way to the end i hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to like and subscribe really makes a difference if you do and yeah if you want even more stuff then check out my membership area there's all sorts of films on there short films long films all sorts of things just loads of extra content on top of what i already do for free i thoroughly enjoy doing these films i hope you do too like and subscribe to show your appreciation and i'll see you again on the bank <laughs>